My name is Steve Eisen and I'm the safety director of Kilpack Trucking and this is why I took away personal conveyance. Too many people are abusing personal conveyance and the government is cracking down. When is it okay to use personal conveyance? In my opinion, the only good time to use it is when utilizing your ag exempt miles. I'm going to need you to call me and explain how ag exempt works correctly and also I'm going to give you some examples I got right off the FMCSA website as to uh, regarding personal conveyance. Here are some examples of appropriate uses of a CMV will off duty for personal conveyance. The following are examples of appropriate uses of CMV will off duty for personal conveyance include but not limited to time spent traveling from a driver's in route lodging such as a motel or truck stop to restaurants and entertaining facilities commuting between a driver's terminal and his or her residence between trailer drop lots and the driver's residence and between work sites and his or her residence in these scenarios the commuting distance combined with the release from work and start to work times must allow the driver enough time to obtain the required restorative rest as to ensure the driver is not fatigued. Time spent traveling to a nearby reasonable safe location to obtain required rest after loading or unloading. The time driving under personal conveyance must allow the driver to driver adequate time to Obtain the required rest in accordance with minimum off-duty periods. And that's uh, 49 CFR 395.3A1 and 395.5A before returning to on-duty and resting location must be the first such location reasonably available. And I'm going to add to this one, it's always good practice to get it in writing from the person kicking you off their property and forcing you to PC out of a shipper or receiver to the nearest safe haven parking. So make sure that you get it in writing, make sure that you document it on your logs while you're personal conveying in the middle of your 10 hour break. Also, if your 10 hour break is over and you get kicked off the facility, you cannot personal convey it. You have to put it in drive. Um, number four, moving a CMV at the request of a safety official during the driver's off duty time. And again, if they ask you to move your truck in the middle of your rest, get it in writing. And if you can't get it in writing, Put it on your logs. Put it, notate in your logs that you were forced to move and see if you can get the guy's name and all that other stuff. Um, number five, time spent traveling in a motor coach without passengers. Oh, that one doesn't have to do with us, so I'm not going to read that. Um, time spent transporting personal property while off duty. Uh, we're all company trucks here, so that's not going to happen. And then... Authorized use of a CMV to travel home after working at an off-site location. Um, that doesn't work with us either because your loads are paid to come home. You're paid to come home. So if you get empty in Salt Lake City and your dispatcher says, hey, you need a deadhead home. I don't have a load for you. You cannot use personal conveyance because... Technically, even though your load delivered in Ogden, it ends at our home terminal in Idaho Falls because that's where you're paid. Um, now, here's some examples that would not qualify as personal conveyance. And just so you know, I expect you to watch this whole video because I'm going to ask you a few questions. You have to get them all right and then I will give your personal conveyance back. 
So the following examples are uses of CMV that would not qualify as personal conveyance included but not limited to the following. The movement of a CMV in order to enhance the operational readiness of the motor carrier, for example, bypassing available resting locations in order to get closer to the next loading or unloading point or other scheduled motor carrier destination. So that means like if you were running across the country and you had a place to stop and you stopped and then you chose to personal conveyance to a place further, that's that's a big no-no. That's, that's advancing a load and falsifying logs and that will get you shut down for a minimum of 10 hours. Number two, after delivering a towed unit and the towing unit no longer meets the definition of a CMV, the driver returns to the point of origin under the direction of the motor carrier to pick up another towed unit. Um, that doesn't really include us, um, so we're not going to worry about that one. Let's see. Oh, continuation of a CMV trip in interstate commerce in order to fulfill a business purpose, including bobtailing or operating with an empty trailer in order to retrieve another load. So if you have a load delivering in Lima, Ohio, and they tell you, all right, go ahead and bobtail to Columbia City, Indiana, you can't do that in personal conveyance because you're fulfilling our business needs. So you can't bob, you can't put it on personal conveyance in between loads because you're paid to go from point A to point B with us. So we can't, we can't do that. All right, here's a couple more. Time spent transporting a CMV to a facility to have vehicle maintenance performed. So if you're in the middle of your break and you, uh, and your truck breaks down, you cannot personal convey it to the shop. You have to show that as drive time. Um, after being placed out of service for exceeding the maximum periods permitted, time spent driving to a location in order in location to obtain required rest unless directed by an enforcement officer at the scene. So if you get shut down for abusing your logs, like abusing personal conveyance, um, and they tell you, all right, you need to go to the next, you need to, we're going to, we're going to guide you to this next place. You can't put that in personal conveyance. You have to put that in drive time, even if it shows in red. Um, all right. And I just want to add a couple more things. It is not okay to use personal conveyance and label it as a yard move. And it is not okay to use personal conveyance to extend your 11 hours driving and call it a safe haven. There are other rules and regulations that you need to know. Um, and you need to know how to utilize as a professional truck driver. And if you don't know how to utilize these rules, call me. So just so you know, no more using personal conveyance and calling it a yard move. That is something different. And if you're trying to get to a safe haven, that is something different as well. And I'm going to show you how to do that on our ELD, on our Zonar in a bit, okay? Now that we have gone over PC and we're all experts on personal conveyance and we're no longer going to abuse it. We're going to talk about on duty time and how to correctly utilize all hours of service. When should you show on duty time? This includes, but is not limited to these items, DOT inspections, pre-trip, post-trip, midday inspections, when arriving at the shipper or receiver, you need to show on duty. When you're scaling, you need to show on duty. When you're fueling, you need to show on duty. When adding the trailer and load information um, on your logs, you also need to show on duty. So I'm going to go over this with you on the Zonar shortly as well. And I'm also going to show you how to do a pre-trip inspection. So... We'll get that done right now. Okay, now that we are logged into the Zonar, 
I'm going to show you how to add your trailer and load information. Just remember you got these buttons on the side. It's kind of dark, so it's hard to see, but this is your home button and this is your back button. So if you ever get lost, always push your home button. It will take you back to this main screen and you have your Zonar logs, Zonar coach, EVIR, which is your inspection. You got your messaging, your navigation, and your help. So with the zonar logs we're going to open that up because we have to we have to document whenever we are hooking up a trailer or switching a load so i'm going to go ahead and click on the zonar logs button right here all right and now this is opening up and in order to change my trailer and load information, you got these three little lines in the top left corner. We're going to go ahead and click on those, and that will bring down a drop-down menu. Now you got your driver logs. You got your roadside view. That's very important because you click on that if you get pulled in and get DOT'd and they want to see your logs. You got update duty status, change rule set, update shipping information apply driving exemptions. Um, a driving exemption is if you get caught in something unforeseen and um, like you're, you're pushing your 11 hour clock and a traffic accident happens in front of you and it holds you up on the road for an hour. You would apply that instead of going into personal conveyance for a safe haven. Um, and there's more, there's accept unidentified driving, view unidentified event, verify edits, Certify logs. You want to make sure you're certifying your logs every day um, because that's like signing your name saying, yes, this is what I did on this day. All right. But back to it. Let's uh, let's figure out how to update our trailer and load information. And that is called update shipping info. So we're going to click on this. Steve, you should be on duty when managing your trailer or load. Look at this, it'll even prompt us that we need to be on duty. So we're going to go ahead and switch to on duty. And I am no longer pulling 605V and I am no longer hauling potato products from Idahoan. So, so I want to go ahead and delete these. And in order to delete these, I click on the little edit pencil on the right. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the trailer and continue. Same with the load. I'm going to go ahead and remove the load and continue. And now I'm hooked up to a different load and a different trailer. So I'm going to go ahead and click this plus button up here and add my new trailer and load. So the trailer I have is 1405R. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in as 1405R. And I'm also going to put in the license plate, which is... G1235. And that's the license plate number on that trailer. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll down and put my shipping document in. And my shipping document is 2234156. Two, um, and I want to always put the commodity in. You want to know what you're hauling. And right now I'm hauling potatoes. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in. And also the shipper is Rigby Produce. And when I'm done with that, I'm going to select done and save. And now it shows my trailer number is 1405R. And there's my driver, there's my license on my trailer. And there's my shipping dock, my commodity, and my shipper. Now I am legal to start driving after I've done my pre-trip, which I'm going to show you how to do next. So in order to do a pre-trip on here, I'm going to hit my home button. Take me back to the main screen. And I got my Zonar logs, my Zonar coach, and my EVIR. And this is your electronic vehicle inspection report. We're going to go ahead and open this. And after we open this, um, we are going to want to start a new inspection. And if you are off duty, it's going to squawk at you and say, hey, you should be on duty when doing your inspection. 
if you're already on duty, it's not going to squawk at you. So I'm actually going to edit my logs and change them to off duty so that I can show you. So let's go ahead and switch to off duty and apply and total vehicle miles. One, two, three, four, five. You want to put in your total vehicle miles and the location. And I'm in Idaho Falls, Idaho. And we're going to go next and done and save. Oh, uh, annotation is required. So I'm just going to put off duty because that's what I'm doing right now. And we're going to click done and save. All right. After the save, we're going to go ahead and start an EVIR. We're going to start a new inspection. Steve, you should be on duty when inspecting your vehicle. And now it is wanting me to be on duty, which you we DOT does require you to do one on duty inspection every day. So we're going to go ahead and switch to on. And we are going to do a tractor trailer pre-trip inspection. And after we do that, we're going to go ahead and click continue. And now it's saying use the yellow area as a guide to touch the back of the tablet to the tag and hold it for two seconds. So right now I'm supposed to be scanning the vehicle's asset tag. And that is the black tag located inside your truck. So we're going to go out to the truck and scan that and I'll show you how. All right, now that we are in the truck, you see these little... All right, now that we are in the truck, you see these little yellow tags, the two yellow ones and the one black one. We're gonna go ahead and scan the black one first. So what I wanna do is on the back side of this tablet, I wanna match this part up with the black button. So when I do that, the tablet's gonna vibrate in my hand and it's gonna be able to recognize the truck. So I'm gonna hold this here for a second. And then it's gonna want me to review my last inspection. Let me see if I can get a spot where I can hold the phone still. All right, so this shows the last inspection. Shows that on the last inspection, they scan the tractor front, right side engine, left side engine, inside cab, compliance, tractor left rear, tractor right rear, trailer front, trailer left rear, and trailer right rear and everything has a green check mark by it, so that means everything is good. So we're gonna go ahead and click this little box that says we reviewed the last inspection and everything is good, then we're gonna click continue. Then we put in the mileage of the truck, so we wanna look at the truck and put the mileage in, which is 223.698, so we're gonna put in the mileage of the truck, 223.698, continue. All right, now, this is everything we have to scan. I'm just going to scan a couple of them, and then I'm going to scan the rest of them off the video so this video doesn't take forever. So if we need help scanning, we got this scan help button in the top right corner. I'm going to go ahead and click that because then it shows where the scanner location is, and I'm going to scan one of these yellow tags, and I'm going to scan all the other tags as well. So once I scan this little yellow tag, this is inside the cab. And this shows your cab lighting, steering horn, and if you have any issues with any of these, like, oh, let's just say that I've my door handle broke. So if my door handle broke, I would want to click doors handles, and I want to click broken. Doors handles broken. Is it safe to drive? Uh, yes, it is. And if you want to add a note so it sends it to the shop, um, you could click other. And we would put something like, please fix, oops, fix this when I get home. And then this is going to send a message to our shop guy. And once we complete the inspection and it's gonna let him know that we need to fix my broken door handle when we get home. And then we're gonna go continue. Is it safe to drive again? 
um, and if it's safe to drive we select yes and then we save it um, now I'm going to go through and scan the rest of them now after I've scanned everything there should be a little green check mark on every single one unless we've marked something wrong and in this case I marked inside the cab that I had a door handle broken and after I'm done doing this we're going to go ahead and select continue in the bottom right corner and then we're going to certify that this inspection is accurate and then we're going to submit it all right now you see right there it says upload pending pending please dock the device after we dock the device and drive for a bit then it's going to send to our shop guy Again, I want to thank you all for watching this video. I appreciate each and every one of you. Please give me a call after you watch this. I am going to have a few questions that I need you to answer. And after you answer those, I will turn your personal conveyance back on. I just want to make sure that everybody understands that it's, it's abused too much and it's not taken lightly and DOT is cracking down. And again, I cannot express enough how much I appreciate each and every one of you. So looking forward to hearing from y'all. All right.